What a drag it is getting on. Kids are different today. I hear every mother say, but I need something today to calm her down. And though she's not really ill, there's a little yellow pill. She goes running for the shelter of her mother's little helper, and it helps her on her way. Get her through a busy day. Lou Parati. Um, grew up, born and raised in Rhode Island. Um, I work for Rajawani's Park Zoo as the director for uh, conservation programs for the zoo. Um, strong interests in, of course, music and reptiles and bugs and all the creepy kinds of things in life. But, yeah. My name is Phil Wells. I play bass for Farm Dog. 
and I, uh, I work at a bank in the technology end of things. Uh, I do a thing called change management, which is keep control of, of all the uh, changes that go on in the network. Um, I also do a lot of carpentry on the side because I still enjoy that. I did that for a living for years. I still enjoy that. My name is Brett Haskins, uh, guitarist. I'm uh, from Chicago, Illinois, and I moved out here about six years ago uh, from Chicago to work at the zoo as an elephant handler. And uh, that's what I do now, is uh, I work at the Roger Williams Park Zoo and uh, train their elephants. the drums as a, as, a, as a kid, you know, listening to music, it's just the drums always just blew me away. Um, didn't really stop playing until high school. Um, went to a keg party and there were some kids playing live music there and it was like, yeah, you know, yeah, you always want to be the drummer, you know, and it was like, ah, I need to be the drummer, you know, and had never sat behind a set of drums before and had asked the guy if I could get up and try his drums, you know, and uh, so he let me get up there. And, Man, it was like just came natural to me. It just I could keep a beat right off the bat, you know. And went home and begged mom and dad to let me get some drums and uh, a set of drums and a Walkman radio, and I taught myself how to play. Uh, Got to be going on almost 30 years of playing them now. But, but yeah, that was kind of the the tipping point. I think was that party. Well, I've always liked music since I was a little kid, and uh, when I was in fifth grade, I started playing the viola, just kind of like a violin, and uh, played that for many years, and uh, when I was in high school, I took a solo to a competition, and I did very poorly on it, and I got frustrated, and the next day I sold my viola and bought a guitar, taught myself to play guitar. Uh, there's a couple other bands that I, I played with. Uh, I started one in college um, called Shallow Abyss, <laughs> and uh, we were kind of a strictly a garage band. I mean, we played a few gigs, but it was still fun to get together and kind of cut our teeth on the feel of how to make music with one another. And uh, I played with another band called The Thrifty Nickel in, in college, and we did mostly original stuff. And, and uh, made a few nice studio recordings. We used to play in Chicago as well as a college town. And uh, I played another band called the Grateful Duke Experience, and we did all Grateful Dead covers. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. We played every every single Thursday night um, at a at a little watering hole in a college town, and uh, 
And as far as right now, I'm in two bands. I'm in a band, still in a band in Chicago called the Cast Iron Skillet Band. And we do mostly covers. And uh, we, what we like to do is play entire albums, uh, figure out the whole album. And uh, when we do a show at a bar, we play that whole album, whether it's Dark Side of the Moon or Abraxas by Santana or, you know, uh, uh, Stevie Dan, uh, Can't Buy a Thrill or something like that. And then Farm Dog which is this band, uh, which is all covers. Uh, we try to play with a little bit more uh, grit uh, and try to do a little bit more obscure covers than uh, uh, the standard fare at the, at the bar circuit around here in uh, Lower Rhode Island. I'm 51. I've been playing bass since I was 14. So it's been a while. <laughs> it's my passion. It's the thing. One thing I've never strayed from. You know, I've had a lot of jobs and, and careers and stuff, and uh, playing bass and acoustic guitar, always been there. When I when I met Lou, I was 21, he was 17, and me and uh, a friend of mine had started a uh, original punk band, and we played really fast and really crazy. We couldn't get any drummer to keep up with us, and Lou came to to, to try out. He'd been playing drums for four months, and we could tell he was he was gonna rock, but he couldn't keep up with us because we were too crazy. So um, we got another drummer for a while, and we played with them for quite a while. And like about two years later, we needed to get a drummer again, and he came back and been with us, been with me ever since. We, we stayed in that band that, that was an original punk band that me and my buddy wrote all the tunes and uh, we did that for 22 years. came to be, uh, let's see, our lead singer guitar player Brett, he uh, started working at the zoo as our new elephant handler and it came to my attention that he was a musician and uh, you know a bunch of other zookeepers said oh you know you ought to link up with the new guy here he's a musician and so we were having at the time a going away party for some employees and uh, it was a, a karaoke party and so the new guy gets up and sings a song, a Stevie Wonder song, too. I can't even remember exactly which one it was, but I remember my jaw was on the ground. I said, man, if this guy could play the guitar as good as he could sing, we probably got something going here. And I immediately approached him when he got done with the song and said, I, I know a bass player. we gotta, we got to try and put a band together. And, and we did. We uh, wasn't, I think, more than a week later, we, we got together at my house and, uh, and, and was
was magic, man. We just we just clicked right from the start. So it was the birth of Farm Dog. Uh, there was a lady who was leaving uh, the zoo when I started the zoo. I had only been there for a couple of months, and, and she was having a going away party. And they were having a karaoke uh, party for her going away party, and so I went to this. And uh, uh, some people talked me into getting up and doing a song, and so I got up and I did a Stevie Wonder tune, uh, Boogie On Reggae Woman. And after I sang that, uh, Lou, the drummer, came up to me and he said, uh, uh, Dude, are you in a band? And I'm like, no. He goes, you are now. You know? <laughs> so uh, I told him I played a little bit of guitar, and you know, he said, that's great. He said, we can find a bass player, and then we can start getting together and making some music. Lou called me up one day and said he's got this guy that he works with that plays guitar and sings. And they had just sat in with another band that, um, they were doing very commercial type pop stuff for to make money with, and um, Brett was like, "Nah," you know. So Lou was like, "Well, let me give this guy a call." So he called me, and and we got together right out here in the barn, and that was it. I mean, literally, it was like after like two songs, we're like, "Okay, you know, we're gonna practice once a week until we're ready." And then it took us about. I don't know, not a year, maybe five, six months when we said, okay, we got our first game.
favorite part of performing is when the band is clicking on all cylinders and we stop concentrating on what it is we're doing and we relax and a couple of us might close our eyes and kind of get lost in the middle of what it is we're doing and that's when the magic happens that's when we create something from nothing and uh, Sometimes we get really caught up in the dynamics of the music. Maybe it's started off, the song started off slow or quiet and uh, we crescendoed and built this song up and, uh, and now we're at this apex and everybody's really firing on all cylinders and just, I mean, we're really driving it home and it's just, there's nothing better than that. You know, um, that's the, for me the greatest part of playing. I love watching people dance in front of us. It's, it's like, I don't know if it's fulfilling or what, what it is, it's just thrilling. When you're going along and you're, you're having fun and there's a bunch of people on the dance floor in front of you having even more fun. Just letting it all fly, just happy to be together, and just having a I love that, it's so cool. Just watch that right in front of you. I'd say that's probably the best. I think having a dance floor full of people having a good time up in front of us is probably the goal. That's the highlight. You know, nothing worse than playing to an empty bar or you know a bunch of people that just aren't into what you're doing. You know, so ultimately that's that's what you like to see. That's you know when people are dancing and having a good time, then you know you're doing something right. So that's the ultimate goal, I think. Uh. The least, my least favorite part of performing, uh, performing. I'd have to say it's, it's sometimes, sometimes we're not clicking on all cylinders, and a lot, most of the time it's me. Uh, I'm not feeling something the way I want to feel it, and uh, maybe my fingers aren't working the way I want them to work, and uh, I'm really chunking out a, long, a lot of wrong notes, and I'm fretting chords incorrectly, and forgetting my words, and. And uh, I find myself struggling sometimes on stage, and it, it shouldn't be that way, but sometimes it is. Uh, we find that with a, with a lot of people, when you're that passionate about something it is that you do, that if it's not happening how you know it can happen, you get frustrated pretty quickly, and, it, and then it's not fun. It, it seems like work. It seems like a job. Um, and... Uh, that's kind of a sucky thing to say about the band that you're playing in, but it is what it is. I mean, and for me, that's my least favorite thing is when, when what I'm thinking in my head isn't coming out through the mechanics of how I'm playing and the mechanics of my voice. I'm singing. Oh, moving stuff. <laughs> moving stuff is the worst. Then we have to say, they don't pay us to play because we like that. They pay us to move all this junk back and forth. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you start at your house, you load everything up, you drive, you get there, you unload everything. And then at two o'clock in the morning, you're doing the exact opposite. Every time you play, play for three hours, you work for six. Breaking down at the end of the night. <laughs> Loading all the equipment back into the car. Um, yeah. yeah, we haven't reached the roadie point yet, but, but no, that's probably the least, especially when you're all tired from playing, but um, 
Yeah, probably least favorite part. Yeah. All right, y'all, we're gonna reach way back, way back to We're going back to 1930 here. Yeah. 1930. <laughs> we're gonna try a little tune. Uh, we haven't played this one that much, man. We're gonna try a little tune from the, an old Pink Floyd album called, from the album Metal. Yeah! And uh, we're gonna see what happens here, man. Yeah.
I remember when we first started playing, uh, we used to play this little bar called Copperfields uh, over by the airport. And, uh, and I remember we were an opening act for a couple of different bands. And there was this one band that, that we got hired to open up for. And they were an okay band. Uh, they were musically very good, but however, not very dynamic. I won't say the name of the band, but they weren't very dynamic. They were great musicians, but their dynamics, meaning their ability to take the, take the audience, take the group of people watching music and take them on a journey and, and take them through some emotions, they lacked that ability. And uh, we had a really good set. And we finished off with probably a 25-minute Cowgirl in the Sand, uh, Neil Young. And just, I mean, soloed this song to death and really took them on a ride. And we finished playing, and the uh, singer from the other band came up to us, and he's like, nice job, assholes, <laughs> you know, because he didn't want to follow us, you know. So that was kind of cool, kind of cool. That's, uh, I mean, it was a, he didn't mean it to be malicious. That's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, kind of like, like, I see what you just did, you know, <laughs> like... And uh, it's a pretty good compliment. Exits on this side of the dance floor and over on that side of the bar. And there's another exit to the back of the pool hall there, man. So uh, just in case Phil starts playing too fast and like spontaneously combusts. And that has happened before, I will say. Explosion. I have exploded many times. 